Oh hey, don't mind me. Just playing the new Microsoft Flight Simulator at 10 frames per second. That, that's not important. Trust me, I'm an excellent flyer. Well, this is gonna be a bit problematic. Hello and welcome to the cesspool. I'm sorry for the mess, I just got in a plane crash. I'll get the place cleaned up as soon as possible, don't worry about it. Until then though, I'm going to need to survive out here in the woods. And luckily for me, I have plenty of experience in the wilderness survival department. All thanks to the most classic medium of them all, survival video games. Survival games have been associated with computers since the early 70s, when the Oregon Trail was originally released in 1971. The game was then produced by the Minnesota Educational Computing Consortium starting in 1975. The game was very popular in schools, the original creator actually starting out as a student teacher who developed the game for the students in the class to understand the real mid-19th century Oregon Trail. It was a strategy survival game with tiers of difficulty which focused on management of resources, currency, and health of everybody on the expedition. The most prominent version of the Oregon Trail, however, has to be the 1985 classic on the Apple II. It added improved graphics as well as the addition of NPCs to help simulate the real Oregon Trail. If you went to school in the late 80s into early 90s, this was the pinnacle of video games in the classroom. The Oregon Trail was a classic survival video game of the 80s, no doubt about it. Although there are some other games from that era that are not as well remembered. There were classics such as Seven Cities of Gold in 1984 and Heart of Africa in 85. These games were both developed by Ozark and were more focused on finding treasure than actual survival, but still fall into the genre. Seven Cities of Gold was a big success in strategy gaming world at the time, and Heart of Africa definitely existed a year later. Luckily by the 90s developers were actually starting to define what a survival video game really was, and I'm happy about that to be totally honest. I'm getting a little tired of these strategy survival games, I really need my survival tutorial. I was getting this some seriously drastic measures. I'm sorry. Unreal World in 1992 was debatably the first real survival game. It featured a class system along with simple tasks to help you survive in the Iron Age. It used ASCII style 2D graphics, which at the time were top of the line. You had to survive tough weather, hunt for food, as well as suffer realistic consequences to different conditions in the environment, such as frostbite. It was really ahead of its time in terms of survival games, and many of the concepts developed in Unreal World would become staples in future survival titles. Robinson's Requiem in 1994 added even more onto the basic survival principles, and even added theming. It was only available in Europe, but ended up being a pioneer in the survival genre. You play as an officer on a spaceship that crash lands on a hostile planet. These tropes have been used over and over again, obviously, but this game was one of the first to capitalize on it. As far as mechanics are concerned, it added some really important aspects to modern survival, such as manageable inventory, as well as a crafting system. Now, Konami stepped in and tried to capitalize on this emerging genre as any Konami would, and released Survival Kids in 1991 along with two sequels Deuce and Tales of the Sun. All three of these titles were heavily inspired by Robinson's Requiem. Up until this point, developers were really defining the different aspects that would be in the modern survival video game genre. However, it took until 2003 until they actually implemented those aspects into their own game. In 2003, Unreal Software released Stranded. This early 3D survival game had the players surviving on a dangerous island trying to find their way home. The game tasks the player with doing many of the basic aspects of survival that have become commonplace in modern games. Base building, food and water management, as well as sleeping in a day-night cycle were introduced in this game. The island was randomly generated and included both passive and aggressive animals for the player to discover. It even included a modifiable terrain, something that many games to this day don't have as a gameplay mechanic. The game was truly a cornerstone in the modern survival genre. Developers took that core gameplay and they expanded on it and created the modern survival experiences that we know today. The genre in today's age has grown to incredible new heights. There are countless survival games being produced from all across the gaming scene. The one that immediately comes to mind however has to be Minecraft in 2009. Yep, it's the block game. Love it or hate it, Minecraft has probably had one of the biggest impacts on gaming culture in the past decade. 
its constant mainstream status as well as its widespread availability that would even make Todd Howard proud, has made Minecraft one of the most accessible and popular games ever. Now as a survival game, Minecraft is, well, fairly basic to say the least. Don't get me wrong, I still think Minecraft is an incredibly fun game, it's just the vanilla survival experience is lacking that punch that it used to back in the day. Now of course the modding community as well as the fairly frequent updates from Mojang keep the game fresh and new, it's just not up to par compared to games such as Ark or Rust, or even The Forest. Many crafting survival games followed Minecraft in the coming years, one of the most prominent being Terraria in 2011. Terraria took the basic, old-school, sprite-based 2D side-scrolling style and turned it into a fantastic crafting survival game. It has plenty of variety and a heavy fantasy focus. I personally haven't sunk hundreds of hours into this game, but I know more than enough people who have to confirm the quality and lasting impact of the game. A few years further down the road saw an even bigger influx of new mainstream survival games. Seven Days to Die as well as Rust released in 2013, with The Forest coming shortly after in 2014. Each of these games have garnered a pretty large fan base. I personally played the forest the most out of the three and can say for a fact that cannibalism has never been so appealing. Now Rust is a completely different beast. Its biggest appeal by far has to be its online multiplayer. Dropping players naked on a huge open island with nothing but a torch and a trusty hand rock. The hand rock functions as your gathering tool as well as your blunt object. It's perfect for everything. Now advancing past the hand rock you're able to craft basic tools such as bows, axes, and even guns later down the line. Seven Days to Die I don't own, and honestly don't really want to own considering it's $25 and still isn't out of early access after 7 years, Jesus Christ. Of course there are other games I haven't mentioned such as Ark, Raft, Subnautica, and others, each with their own gimmicks and faint traces of storylines, but these are all worthy of their own discussions as they take the basic survival genre in very different territories. In case of emergency. Well, anyway, after looking over all these survival games, I think I've come to the conclusion that they've all piggybacked off each other and expanded the genre in their own way. However, for my survival guide, I think I'm just going to stick with the Oregon Trail. It is a classic, after all. And with that in mind, I've got three dollars, everyone in my party is dead, and I'm thinking about fording a river, but I'm almost out of food. Decisions, decisions. You know what? I think I'm just going to cross it. Screw it. <laughs>